Hello and welcome to the weather update. It's around 2, a little after 2 o'clock on May 16, 2020, and it's a little uh, a little cooler, but it's still kind of warm out there. So we're going to look at some of the current temperatures uh, on this map here. Uh, and you can see everybody's in the 70s and well into the 70s too. we got mid-70s on Long Island uh, for the most part. No sea breeze. We've got a north wind. Um, and same thing in Jersey. Uh, though right along the water, it looks like there is a sea breeze in Jersey along the Barrier Islands. they got mid-60s, but everybody's pretty much in the mid-70s uh, for Long Island. Let's see if we can get some, let's see if there's a sea breeze on the South Shore at all. Um, there does not appear to be. Uh, they're reporting 77 at uh, at West Gilgo Beach, so uh, wow, warm everywhere with no sea breeze on the island. Close this. Um... So we're in the mid-70s, Carl Place reporting 74. Uh, so kind of warm out there, kind of warm, uh, but it is less humid. We'll look at the uh, dew points. Uh, so 70, uh, Central Park's reporting 76. Uh, let's look at Farmingdale, 75, but the dew point is 47, and we have a northeast wind at 9, gusting to 16. So with the breeze and lower dew points, it feels pretty comfortable out there compared to yesterday. Uh, unless you were on the South Shore. South Shore had a great day yesterday. Uh, I slept 73, a little more clouds there. Nine, north wind at 9, gusting to 21. So pretty strong north, northerly wind sets what's keeping the sea breeze at bay. We'll go a little further east. Uh, 73 at uh, West Hampton and north wind at 13, gusting to 22. But the dew point is low. It's 46, so it's a lot more comfortable out. But it's still kind of warm out there. Um... And uh, so those are the conditions to cross our area. We're going to look at the satellite next. Uh, and uh, here's, the, here's a look at the satellite image. And you can see some clouds, uh, some high. We basically have some scattered high clouds filtering the sun. But it's very scattered. And the sun is out. And, you know, it's a pretty sunny day except for the high clouds. Uh, it's a pretty sunny day. Um, so let's go look at the National Hurricane Center because this is what... This is uh there's a hundred percent now they say a hundred percent of a cyclone formation. Uh, this low pressure system located just off the east coast of East Central Florida has become better defined today. In addition, the associated showers and just on just un and associated thunderstorms uh, are organizing. Um, so the storm could bring gusty winds and locally heavy rains across portions of East Central Florida throughout tonight. An interest to the North Carolina coast should closely monitor the progress of this system as it could produce gusty winds and heavy rains there on Monday. And a tropical storm watch is likely to be issued for that area later today. Wow. So tropical storm, I don't ever remember that happening in May. Uh, that is very un, uh, very unusual. And this is, this is all part of the climate crisis that we're going through here. Um, here is your, your storm right there. So uh, we're going to go to tropical tidbits. And this is the site I use for my models, uh, but we are going to wind up using it uh, for uh, this. Uh, for uh, this, so we're going to go to current storms because this tracks all the current storms. Uh, and this is, let's see if this is the one. Invest 90L is the one we are watching. So uh, it actually has uh, maximum winds at 30 knots, gusts to 40 knots. So it's it's very disorganized right now. We're going to look at it on the satellite. Um, Wait for it to load here. Should have loaded this. As I try to preload everything, because sometimes you gotta wait. So here it is on the satellite. It's pretty disorganized, but you can see there is convection here off the coast of Florida, uh, and uh, this will this could get further organized later on. Um, let's take a look at the model, the global uh, hurricane models. So let's look at that. So these are the models, and uh, most of them take it offshore. One of them, though, a couple of them have it making a left-hand turn. Uh, that's very concerning. Um, and then there are these. There's the other camp that takes it out completely. Uh, so yeah, that is the that is the one model guidance. And then this is the GFS ensembles. Uh, and that, like I said, that takes it uncomfortably close uh, to our area. Uncomfortably close. Doesn't have it terribly strong, uh, but it does have it uncomfortably close to our area. So, let's go look at the models right now. We're going to first start with the upper air. So, let's go to the North America view and we'll look at the upper air and show you what the problem is uh, as we go into the uh, look in the upper air. So, we'll first start with the GFS. 
Uh, so we have a little bit of a, we still have that ridge, but then we have this cutoff uh, that develops. Here's the cutoff. Actually, it's barely showing on the GFS. So it keeps it pretty weak, at, le at least in the upper air, I'm not seeing much. But here's that cutoff. And this cutoff hangs out in the southeast. And the problem with the cutoff low like this and a ridge, this, this is kind of like a ridge all around it. It's almost like a, this is like a catcher's mitt, and this is the ball. Uh, it's kind of stuck in that spot for most of the week. And uh, it doesn't really start lifting out until Friday. Uh, and because of that, you still have it. Sh you still have some troughing in the east here, but because of that, it, it's going to ha have a hard time. This storm is going to have a hard time going out to sea because the ridge is coming from this direction here. It's like a, it's blocking everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's look at the European as well. We're pretty much sure it's got the same idea. This is the European. I don't really have enough of the 12 zine. Well, I'm gonna have to use the zero z. Um, so here is that cutoff low with the southeast. It has a bit of a stronger ridge, which if it's stronger and keeps that low further south, maybe it'll be drier for us. And then it kind of, it has it lift out, but in a different way. Euro has that cutoff a little further south. Okay, so let's take a look and see what this means for the surface now. And I'm going to shift this, I'm going to use the eastern U.S. region actually. Let's go to the eastern U.S. region. Shift this over to the GFS and look at the surface here. So, here's the low right here, very weak off the coast of Florida. Here's that high, keeps us dry through the weekend. Here's the low, get, trying to get organized, and then it actually has it making a landfall in the Carolinas. I don't know if there's ever been a tropical system that's made a landfall in May. This just shows you how serious this climate change thing is. Um, but it's all being forgotten because of what's happening with the the beer flu, as <laughs> people call it. But uh, this thing really, look at how it winds up. I wonder if it's going to make like a transition to an, uh, a coastal low here. But this thing really becomes intense. So we stay dry into Monday, and then Tuesday, this thing comes really close to us. And then it kind of just gets absorbed in the upper level low, and then we're stuck in the rain Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we don't, we may not get out of it until Saturday. May not. It looks like it's still developing showers. So this is miserable because it just gets trapped over us for days. And then here comes the next rainmaker for next week. Oh, and look, it forms something else and brings it up the East Coast or tries to bring it up the East Coast next week. you got to be freaking kidding me. So we're going to be having tons of rainy days here. This is horrible. If this GFS is right, um, this is going to be a real mess. Um, and with everything shut, still shut down, you know, this is going to reach the point of insanity here. So this is the GFS. So we're going to just take a look and see how much rain the GFS brings us here. Total accumulated rainfall. Uh, we're going to go all the way to the end of the period here just to show you how wet it has us. Look at that. It has us getting over 10 inches of rain, perhaps? you got to be kidding me. To the end of the month, 10 inches of rain. That could be the wettest May on record, if the GFS was correct, of course. Um, but this is horrible. I'm ready to just get the hell out of New York uh, if this forecast pans out. Um, I'll have to find a way, but... Because it's not worth going insane. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is the GFS. Uh, let's go look at the NAM and see how that handles it. This is the NAM 12 kilometer, 12Z run on the NAM. Start out, we'll start off over here. Well, here's your storm here. It rides up the east coast. The NAM though takes it further out and keeps us dry into Tuesday. It has a much stronger high over us which suppresses us, and you better pray that this high is stronger because it'll suppress the storm and it'll keep us dry and keep the rain away. Um, so I'm hoping the NAM is, is, is more correct in this um, presentation here. But that is quite a wrapped up storm there, I will say. That is quite a wrapped up storm. So you get the idea of what's happening here. Uh, I, I can look at a couple of other models, though I don't think they go RGM, I'm not really going to look at. That doesn't really go far enough out. 
the only other one I can use, we can use the ICON model. And I'll go far enough out. So let's look at the ICON, which I think is based on the Euro, I think. I'm not sure. So it brings it, this is Monday, you can see it brings it on the coast of the Carolinas. It really has the thing of tents. It has it close to us, but still tendency to keep us dry. And then we don't deal with that upper level low at all. It may stay away most of the week in that high. I am praying that high is strong because I'm going to go nuts if it rains for like five days in a row. I'm just going to. I'm just going to go nuts. So, um, the next thing I guess we'll do is look at the wind fields. So, um, let's go look at that. We're going to go to lower dynamics. So, and I'm not going to use the Canadian because the Canadian does not have a good track record with these, these things that can... So, here's the wind field, and it gets pretty impressive, but the worst of the wind field stays away from us. Um from that, but it definitely looks every bit tropical to me on these models, which is absolutely insane. Um, okay, so we're going to change that over to the NAM model, look at the wind field on the NAM model and see. doesn't look too impressive until it gets further offshore, but the NAM fortunately keeps it away and has that strong high over us. Now, GFS, which is the one that wants to take it right up the coast it has it getting really bad by us look at that so if we take a closer look at our region here you'll see it brings some of those strong winds on on this could cause and there's a think a, a, a full moon so there's gonna be a lot of coastal flooding too uh, from this so very interesting situation um, it's still a little bit of ways away but uh, just watching this whole thing just and it kind of just gets absorbed in there it's something else well I guess we'll start with the temperature forecast the GFS obviously is going to keep us cool with that kind of setup um, so uh, I may actually wind up using the, well we're going to look at the temperature forecast from the different models so today kind of tomorrow will be cooler uh, we'll probably be in the upper 60s to around 70 Monday, uh, you can see that it may still have the sun out of us, so we may be in the mid to upper 60s. And then Tuesday, here comes the doom and gloom, stuck in the 50s, maybe 40s for Wednesday, and we're stuck there. Maybe we start warming up by Saturday. But that's the GFS. Let's look at the NAM, 12 kilometer and the temperatures. So you can see that cooler air coming in. Here's that cooler air, especially for tomorrow. It's really cool on the east end, so probably it won't hit 70 tomorrow, I don't think. Unless you're in the city or Jersey. And then Monday, uh, because it has us drier, it still has us in the upper 60s. Lows. And then it does have it cool, us cooler on Tuesday with that northeast flow. I'm sure it's going to be a really cool airflow. Uh, so let's look at the clouds. i got to change the models. We'll look at the uh, cloud forecast. I'm not even going to bother the GFS cloud forecast. Let's just get the name. Because we know what it's going to be with the GFS. <laughs> um, once we're in that rain. So here's today. You see the high clouds. The site's being slow. I know now that's getting a lot of traffic on it. There'll be more clouds tomorrow. I think. Yeah, the site's being slow. There's a lot of people using it because of the... And now with all these people home, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put even more strain on it. Yeah, I can't even load the cloud forecast for the NAM. doesn't even want to load. Oh, that's as far as I got. Just tomorrow, so there'll be some clouds around. Maybe a little more sun in the afternoon. Let's look at Monday. Monday is more clouds. Okay, we'll use windy.com for the rest of this. Uh, this is based on the European, so we can get an idea of the European's solution here to this whole thing. Uh, so. I guess I'm going to start with the clouds, so you can get an idea. So we'll use this with the clouds. Obviously, with the clouds today, because this is kind of, kind of, kind of. Well, you know, we'll start with the rain. All right, we'll start with this. We're going to go into the, take a look at the storm here, and see how it forms it. So the storm's down here, so it's looking pretty disorganized. Well, let's go to Sunday tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m. Definitely can see the signature of it there. You can see the wind around it. Um, it was Monday. It actually takes it over 
takes it over North the, the Outer Banks of North Carolina on Monday and then takes it out to sea. Um, so there's the uh, so it goes out to sea fortunately and we stay dry this is Tuesday we're still dry the rains to our being put, suppressed literally on Wednesday on Wednesday it's still suppressed that high is coming and suppressing the rain southward this is great to see this is great to see so it's being suppressed and uh, I'm very curious if we would have clear skies as a result of that suppression and some clouds over us on Tuesday about Wednesday it tries to clear us out it tries to it really tries to clear us out you definitely have a nice clear day up in northern New England there but we may be stuck on the outer edge of the clouds but hey if it's not raining I'll be happy I'm not gonna complain about the clouds that's for sure okay so we're gonna look at the wind forecast on this now This is your wind forecast. Doesn't look all that impressive, really. I'm going to put it in wind gusts. That's a little better, so you get to see the maximum winds. Uh, all right, so on the east side, you have wind gusts up to 45 miles an hour. This is Monday afternoon and evening. Now, Monday, we're still going to be dealing with the wind, it looks like, because we still have that gradient wind. So we're still going to be dealing with wind gusts up in the 30s. And this, this storm doesn't have to hit us to cause problems with coastal flooding. So you could see there are definitely going to be wind gusts, very strong wind gusts, just to our south of 45 miles there. This is from an easterly direction. If we look at the sustained winds, this is Monday night. Sustained winds at 18. That's not too bad. Um, let's look at Tuesday. So, wow, look at that. There's your storm there. Look at that. So it's actually intensifying. I don't know if it's going extra topical, where it's getting that energy from. Uh, but the models are saying this thing's going to actually intensify as it gets closer to us. And, uh, boy, you better hope that thing goes out to sea, boy. I tell you. The other thing is going to be the waves. So this is the other issue is we're going to be dealing with um, very high surf. Um, right, this is Tuesday. All right, so the high surf's probably going to start on Monday. No, it's not starting on Monday yet, but this is the high surf on Tuesday and then look at the core of the storm you're gonna have waves 20 footers and it gets even worse 16 you know this case is gonna be bad so it's gonna be a lot of uh, coastal flooding you gotta remember we have a high tide with the full moon I think so there's gonna be a lot of coastal flooding from this so okay the last thing I'm gonna check is earthnullschool.net uh, show you why I think this storm is getting out of control because we're going to look at the sea surface temperatures anomaly. The sea surface temperature anomaly, and then I'll wrap up this weather update. Sea surface temperature anomaly. Well, we have we have cool water. I'm saying the water is cooler than normal, though, but there is a patch of warmer water over here. I'm wondering if it's just going to become some type of hybrid or something. Just. I don't think the waters are warm enough in that particular latitude to support a storm like that. But they are above normal off the coast of there's a tongue of above normal water here. But it's good to see some cooler water off these coasts. This may help us, hopefully. We got a root for that high to come in and push this all to the south uh, for us so we can stay safe. The last thing we need is a tropical system in the middle of, the, of this pandemic. So I think that's going to wrap up this weather update. Take care. Thank you for watching.